Hello, my name is Alex Shin. I'm one of the brachial plexus surgeons at the Mayo Clinic. Today I have Becky, who happens to be one of our patients that had a upper trunk pan plexus type injury, who is here three to four months after her injury. And our plan is to show and demonstrate the clinical exam of the brachial plexus. Good morning, Becky. Good morning. So the way we do our clinical exam is we do it in a very much a strategic order. There are various different types of exams that you can do. You could do it from the top down, or you could do it by nerve group. Our preference is to do nerve group. So today, we will first start with manual motor testing, followed by range of motion, and I will get some little nuances to demonstrate how the brachial plexus should be examined. So when we first start with the brachial plexus, we observe and we look. And if I look at Becky here very carefully, I notice that there is an asymmetry about her shoulder. The shoulder on the right has a nice round contour of her deltoid. However, on the left side, it's a little bit flat. We look at the trapezius muscles to make sure the trapezius is good. And then we start first with the very proximal nerve, and that would be the spinal accessory nerve. Becky, I'm going to have you turn around completely, and I'm going to have you face that wall there, and we're going to take a look at her shoulder. Now, what we're going to do first is have her shrug her shoulder straight to the ceiling, and what we're noticing is the symmetry between the trapezius here, and I give a little push down and relax, and the trapezius is normal. The next thing we test are the rhomboids. Please touch your shoulder blades together. And so I'm looking to see if the rhomboids have normal symmetry, and I'm very happy with that. The next thing we look at, turn around, is we're going to start to look at her suprascapular nerve. So what I'd like you to do, Becky, is take this arm and rotate out as far as you can. And if you see here, she rotates out, and if I give a little pressure in there, she's a little bit weak. So we're going to do that again, rotate out, and if you can see, I could kind of push here. I look at her passive motion, which is about 45 degrees, relax. Now do it actively, rotate out, and her active equals passive and has a little bit of resistance. So because she's against gravity, that gives me a grade three. Next, I look for her supraspinatus, rotate from here up to the ceiling, and you can see her supraspinatus is a little weak. Let's turn this way because if I abduct her arm and have her bring her hand this way, she can't quite do that. So her supraspinatus, by definition, is a grade two. The next thing I look at is the long thoracic. If I turn her around again, I'm looking at her scapula. In a majority of patients that have a pan plexus injury, it's very difficult to examine this. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling for the corner of her scapula, I'm taking my hand and I'm gonna push posteriorly, I'm gonna have her resist me. And you can see here, I could get a little weakness here and see how it wings slightly. I wanna show you in contradistinction, the opposite side. I feel for the corner of her scapula and I'm gonna push and you can see the difference of her scapula not retracting backwards. And one more time, and you can see the scapula being pulled inwards. So going back to the injured side, I feel for the corner of the scapula, which is here, and I push, and you can see I can push the scapula backwards and she doesn't have that contour. This gives me a grade of a grade two serratus. So turn around please again. Our next area that we're going to look at are the pectoral muscles. The pectoral muscles have both upper trunk and lower trunk muscles. The best way to do that is to have both hands in front and we push the hands together. By doing that, I could see her normal lower pec, her normal upper pec on this side, and on this side, I can see the lower pec is normal and the upper pec is slightly atrophic, but still has some good signal in it, relax. So I would give her upper pec a grade four, her lower pec a grade five. Turn around one more time. The thoracodorsal nerve that goes to the latissimus dorsi is one of those nerves that's hard to fool. And the way you fool it is you could reach underneath her armpits and have her cough. <coughs> and if you saw that focusing in right here, <coughs> you could see her and feel the latissimus here. Once you do that and feel it bilaterally, you know it fires. 
the way you test a latissimus is to have her hand right on her back gluteus and I'll pull it away and I can not only see but feel. So she has a normal thoracodorsal latissimus. Turn around. The next nerve is going to be the musculocutaneous nerve and we want to see how she bends her elbow. So she did something there that is really interesting. Drop down, look forward, and bend your elbow up. So she has a little trick motion for where she does a little extension of her elbow and a quick jog forward. So do that one more time so they can see that. Okay, and you can see she's struggling a little bit, but she has full motion here. And what else she's doing is she's extending her wrist. And that is almost like a reverse Steinler. But if I look at her arm carefully, let's turn around this way. And we're gonna focus, just drop your hand in mine. Just bend your arm a little bit. And you can see she's firing, but she here has a biceps tendon that fires. And I'm gonna hold her arm in here like this. Now bend your arm up. So she has a real hard time doing that. But once I get here, bend your arm up, she could go all the way up. So in definition, she does not have full range of motion with her biceps muscle when I neutralize all the other muscles. So this to me is a grade two. Bend up again, and I will also feel for her brachialis, and she has a little brachialis there that's firing, but if you notice here, bend up again, there's no brachioradialis. So for the musculocutaneous nerve, she has a biceps that's a grade two and a brachialis that's a grade two because she cannot get full motion in her full arc of motion, even though she could fake us out with the reverse Steindler and the little bit of a kick that she does to get her elbow bending. Now we're gonna do the deltoid. The deltoid muscle has three heads, posterior, middle, and anterior. Why don't you go forward as far as you can? Now she can go about 30, 40 degrees, relax, go out to the side and relax and come posteriorly and relax, okay? So if I push my hand against her, I could see and feel the deltoid firing, but she does not have full range of motion in, let me relax your hand, full range of motion in her passive arc. By definition, that's a grade two. Please note that sometimes the suprascapular nerve can also fake us out and give full shoulder range of motion with no deltoid. So it's really important to feel the deltoid and then feel it fire. The way I do that is I put my hand on the deltoid and push out to the side and I can feel her deltoid contract and so I know it's contracting. Another great trick to see if the posterior deltoid is working is called the swallowtail test. The swallowtail test is when she'll bend 45 degrees forward, she's gonna drop her arms down, nope, don't go any further, and then extend your arms like you're swimming, both of them. And if you see here, both arms come up symmetric, and so come up. So I know that the posterior deltoid is at least maybe a grade three. And so that is very, very helpful for me. Once we get done with the axillary nerve, we move on to the median nerve. Turn around this way. The median nerve, we first start with a pronator quadratus. The pronator quadratus turns the hand down, and so I'm gonna have her hold her palm down, and I'm gonna twist it over, and that is quite strong. And so to me, that is a grade four to a grade five, and because I know this side is injured, I'm going to give it a grade four plus. The other median nerve musculature that I'm going to do is pronator quadratus. I'm going to have her hold up. In theory, bending the elbow takes out the pronator teres. Don't let me twist. And that's just as strong. The next thing we do is we look at her palm and her finger flexors, and we're going to look at the flexor carpi radialis. Bend your wrist really strong. I'm looking for the flexor carpi radialis and I can feel that in here, and you feel that coming to the scaphoid, and that's a grade four. To test a palmaris, take your two fingers here, and she has a palmaris that is a grade four. And then I'll start looking at her finger flexors. To make her fingers move, make a tight fist, and I'm gonna bring your hand out here so they can see. I'm gonna test the FDP of the index and the middle finger, and she is so strong, she's hurting my thumb. Relax. To test FDS, 
I hold three fingers down and I'll bend that finger all this one down like that. Yeah, there you go. And then I could test that and you could test each finger or just that individual finger. The next we test how tight she could pull her thumb and this is normal. We'll then have her come opposite, test her thinner muscles, her FPB and her abductor pollicis brevis and her opponents. And then next, hold your fingers like this, relax your hand and just hold them like that. And we test the intrinsics of the median nerve and they're normal. Okay? So now that we have done the median nerve, we're going to work on the radial nerve. The first radial nerve that comes down is triceps. And what you normally have to do is relax your arm. I'm going to have you extend your elbow and you want to make sure you take gravity out of it. So she or, here she has anti-gravity and at least, and then we're going to bring her arm up here like this, go straight up. So she has a grade four, grade five triceps. The next radial nerve would be the supinator. So I'll bring her arm up like this, keep your palm up. Don't let me turn. And she has a supinator that's weak. If you notice, my hand turning her hand is very, very easy. Now it goes palm up, but she can still do it. So that to me is a grade two. If I look, turn sideways. If I look at her bending her arm up real strong, she has a little flicker right here and that's the brachioradialis. But essentially the brachioradialis is really, really weak. And it's mostly her biceps and her brachialis causing her elbow bending. The next we'll do the wrist extension, go all the way back. And I test wrist extensions straight up to the side, bring it there, yep. So she has ECR L, ECR B, and out this way, and ECU. The next, make a fist, and open your fingers straight up, and I test all those, and in her, they're completely normal. So she has a normal radial nerve. The last thing we test is the ulnar nerve. The ulnar nerve, we start with the FCU, bend your wrist up, and she's got a very, very strong FCU. We start then with looking at the small and ring finger, open them up. I'll hold here and have her bend your fingers and I'll test how the flexor digitorum profundus is flexing the small and ring finger. And in her case, they are normal or grade five. So then we test her intrinsics, spread apart, spread together, bring your thumb in, and in very rapid fashion, we've checked all the intrinsics, bend down, okay? And so all, that's the manual motor testing. And the last thing we do is get passive motions in all motions so that we can measure them and compare them to our active motions. One part of the exam is looking at the face and the, especially the left eye, which is the injured eye for what we call the Horner sign. Becky here has a slight Horner sign. The pupil is slightly smaller than the other one. And she had a slight droop of the left eye consistent with a Horner syndrome. And you have to look for this. And typically it's in a dark room with a flashlight, but she has hers that is slowly resolving, which uh, you should always look for in the clinical exam. The next thing we do is what we call a Tinel sign. A Tinel sign is where we tap along the brachial plexus, look that way, and what I'm trying to do is find an area along the nerves that she feels. So I know she has a radial nerve issue, and or a, I know she has, excuse me, I know she has uh, a biceps muscutaneous issue. So if I come down right about here and I hit this area here, that face, the grimace, and then she'll say, yep, that kind of radiates down my arm. And so the last thing we do is a little check of the pulses and they're normal. And that is a very general brachial plexus exam in a patient that has a partial injury. Becky, thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay.